In the part 2 of this tutorial, we are going to create surfaces that fill the gap between subdis and all these surfaces we are going to join with the poly surfaces generated from subd, creating a single B wrap. In the last step, that B wrap will be contoured and based on the contours we will create slabs. Without further ado, let's get started. First, we are going to extract uh, naked edges. So I will type brap edge, connect with brap, and in the en output, uh, we will extract only naked edges. So I'm going to join them, and I will keep only those naked edges that are uh, larger than, let's say, 200. First, I'm going to uh, check the length. So here we get, we'll uh, flatten this list and here we can check the length. So I want to keep only those naked curves that are uh, larger than 200. So these, uh, these four, five and six. Okay, so these uh, six um, curves we are going to keep. So I will use component larger than I'll type here uh, 200. Uh, this values uh, depends uh, on the case you have. In my case, uh, larger than 200, uh, it's fine. And I will use a cal pattern. And you can see that we keep only uh, these six curves. Right now, I want to create pairs of curves. So I want to place these two curves in the branch, let's say zero, these two curves in the branch one, and these two curves in the branch two. I'm going to extract the middle point of each curve. So I will extract middle point. And I will try to find closest two uh, points for each point. So if we take this point, and I will uh, try to find two closest point, from the list of six points. Obviously, first closest point will be the same one, and the next one will be this guy. And I will extract these two index numbers. So the same logic uh, for each curve. So I'll use here graft, because for each point, we'll try to find closest uh, two points. So I will type closest points and the set of points will be these guys and here i will type two as a result uh, i will take only index numbers so for the point with the index zero the closest two points obviously is the same point with the index zero and point with the index five then for the point with the index one the closest point it's the same point with the index one and uh, point with the index three and so on. But you can see that we have overlappings. So we have pairs 0, 5, 1, 3, 2, 4. And we have repetition here 3, 1, 4, 2, 5, 0. So how to keep only uh, these three pairs? We can keep uh, first three branches, but what if we have, let's say, uh, 1000 of pairs? So I'm going to sort them in order to have the same uh, distribution of numbers. So for instance, we have 0, 05, 0, 05, 1, 3, 1, 3, 2, 4, 2, 4. And I'm going to uh, join uh, the text. So we'll use component text join in order to create a single value. So we have 0, 05, 1, 3, 2, 4, 1, 3, 2, 4, 0, 5. I will flatten the list and I will use component create set. I want to check uh, which set of uh, values we have. So these three set of values. And once we get these three set of values, I will uh, type component um, characters and in the C 
output we have 0, 5, 1, 3 and 2, 4. So this is the output that uh, we need. And now uh, we can place in the list item and the uh, list that from which we're going to extract uh, these values. It's actually uh, the list of curves that we have from the cal pattern these six guides from 0 to 5 okay I will turn off this if we check branch 0 I will simplify okay and I will type here values from 0 to 2 branch 0 these two guys branch 1 these two branch 1 and branch 2 okay in the next step I will find once again middle point but right now we have uh, two points inside each branch and I will create a polyline uh, between uh, these two uh, set of points we'll get a vertical line and this uh, vertical line I'm going to sweep around their corresponding two curves. So I will use component sweep2. So the section will be this poly line and rail1 and rail2 will be uh, the list of um, curves that we have. So once again you can see that in each branch we have 0 and 1. 0 and 1 will be placed in R1 and R2. As a result, we get the surface. So here we get three surfaces. This is how we can fill the gap uh, with the surfaces. And now I will take this B wrap. So once again, I will use B wrap and I will uh, merge in the same list with the curve three curves that we get flatten the list and I will use brep join as a result we get single open brep all right and in the last step I will create slabs for that we'll use uh, contour component so this one in the S, I will, I will place B wrap. Uh, direction will be set. And the uh, distance will be 4. And also, we need a um, point from which the contour will start. So I will disable this for now. And the uh, starting point for the contours will be the lowest point of the B wrap. And we can get uh, this lowest point with the component um, uh, evaluate uh, box. And in W uh, input, I will place zero. So we're going to extract uh, the point on the bottom. And this point will be the starting point of the contours. So I'm going to enable this. All right, once we get contours, uh, I'm going to offset uh, these uh, curves. So I will use component offset, um, offset curve. And the plane for the offset will be the plane where uh, the curves are positioned. So I will use component planner. And here we get and the position where the curve is uh, it's placed so this plane I will use to offset the curve and we need distance uh, distance can be let's say let's say 0 0.6 and this distance should be negative because we want to offset them inside all right and once we uh, get offset curves we can um, create the surface because all these uh, curves are closed curves once we get surfaces we can extrude them along 
uh, that direction by let's say 0 0.3. So here we get glass surface, here we have slabs, and here we get the lines on the facade. I mentioned that I will get um, back to the beginning of the, of the script. So I'm going to uh, disable pipes and I'm going to disable a second step of the script and I will keep only lines. So if we have here zero instead of um, 0 0.0005 I will demonstrate what we're going to get we'll get here unnecessary curves because uh, the curves that we get will be joined like this so we'll have these joints which we want to avoid so if you have zero you'll get these unnecessary joints of the curve and we cannot um, uh, remove them from the list using uh, dot product uh, logic. So in order to avoid these uh, parts, these connections, we should place uh, a number which is slightly uh, larger from the uh, zero, which in our case is 0 0.005. Uh, so this is the only reason why we should have a number slightly larger than zero because if the number it's lower uh, we'll get these unnecessary connections for all of you who would like to go a step further we created an extended tutorial in which you will learn how to create sub d shape that we used in this video while I was modeling the final geometry, I used some tips and tricks that might be helpful for improving your modeling skills. This you can watch on our Patreon page and support our work at the same time. With that, you will also get access to all our extended tutorials and project files. Before I wrap this video up, I would like to share something with you. If you are in architecture and you're interested in learning more about Rhino and Grasshopper, but you're tired of searching through thousands of tutorials online, and wasting so much time doing that and you're looking for a structured learning approach with one-on-one -on -one support we created a course called Rhino for Architects that will guide you through all of the basics both Rhino and Grasshopper in addition to that we'll be covering some advanced modeling techniques using subdivision tools for Rhino 7 which will allow you to create any kind of geometrical shape that you match when it comes to Grasshopper, we'll explain every single essential component with examples and homework files, so even if you're a total beginner, you'll be able to understand the logic and mathematics behind the program. On top of that, we'll teach you all about various plugins for Rhino that are used in architecture such as V-Ray, Visual Arc and even Bongo for architectural animation. Lastly, we'll cover architectural presentation, creation of diagrams and a couple of case study projects. If this sounds like something you would like to check out, feel free to schedule your free Zoom call with us in the first link in the description. On this call, we will evaluate your current skill sets, determine if this course can help you out, and on top of that, we will share our learning platform with you so you can get a better idea how all of that looks on the inside. Click on the link below the video and we'll talk soon. Take care.